I am heading out to Fort Myers now to listen to a lecture with Dr. Michael Greger. He just released his new book. You may have heard about it, How Not to Die, and this should be exciting. In a little bit of traffic here. Almost there. You've arrived. It's been my honor and duty to see you through this mission. Here we are. Well, I want to just welcome everyone and say good afternoon to all of the people from Southwest Florida. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The town at 1 a.m. yesterday morning, so we're trying to keep them uh, fed and, and rested if we can. We have a five book which is on sale outside. He doesn't want you to die at all. <laughs> Top three killer. 
Now look, there are drugs that can help too. There's cholesterol lowering statin drugs for the heart. Um, there's a bunch of uh, kind of blood sugar pills and insulin injections. It usually takes a couple different classes of high blood pressure medications to push your blood pressure down. But the same diet does it all. It's not like there's there's a brain healthy diet and somehow different from a heart healthy diet. No, a liver healthy diet is a kidney healthy diet, is a body healthy diet, one diet to rule them all. There's only one diet that's ever been proven to reverse heart disease in the majority of patients. Plant-based diet. So disability in the United States is our diet. Bumping tobacco smoking to number two. Cigarettes now only kill half a million Americans every year, whereas our diet kills hundreds of thousands more. With per capita cigarette consumption, there's 4,000 cigarettes a year. So like the average person walking around smoked half pack a day. The media was telling you to smoke. Famous athletes agree, even Santa Claus wanted you to smoke. Look, you want to keep fit and, uh, you know, stay slender, so you make sure to smoke and eat lots of hot dogs to trim and eat lots of sugar to stay slim and trim a lot better than that apple there. I mean, jeez. <laughs> Though apples do connote goodness and freshness, reads one internal tobacco industry memo which brings up many possibilities for a youth-oriented cigarette. They want to make apple-flavored cigarettes for kids. Shameless. For digestion's sake, you smoke. I mean, no curative powers claimed by Philip Morris, but hey, better safe than sorry and smoke. Blow in her face and she'll follow you anywhere. No woman ever says, no, they're so round, so firm, so fully packed. <laughs> After all, John Wayne smoked them until he got lung cancer and died. Back then, even the paleo folks were smoking. And so were the doctors. Now, this is not to say there wasn't you know, controversy within the medical profession. Sure, some doctors smoke camels, you know, but uh, you know, other doctors preferred lucky. So there's a little disagreement going on. The leader of the U.S. Senate agreed. I mean, who wouldn't want to give their throat a vacation? Not a single case of throat irritation. How could there be when cigarettes are just as pure as the water you drink? Maybe up in Flint, Michigan. <laughs> but don't worry, if you do get irritated, no problem. Your doctor can write you a prescription for cigarettes. This is an ad in the Journal of the American Medical Association. And so when mainstream medicine is saying that smoking on balance may be beneficial, and the AMA is saying that where could you turn if you just wanted the facts. What's the new data advanced by science? Well, hey, she was too tired for fun, and then she smoked a cat. <laughs> Babe Ruth spoke of proof positive medical science, that is, when he still could speak before he died of throat cancer. You know, if by some miracle there was some smokingfact.org website out back then could deliver the science directly bypassing commercially corruptible institutional filters, you would have become aware of studies like this. This is a, an inventive study in California published in 1958 showing that non-smokers at least 90% less lung cancer than smokers. So do you change or do you wait? If you wait until your doctor tells you between bites, to change, be too late. If you wait until the powers that be officially recognize it, again, it could be too late. Even after the Surgeon General report came out, quitting smoking. 
But how many more people have to die, though, before the CDC says, uh, don't wait for open heart surgery to start eating healthy as well? Thank you so much, Dr. Williams. Did everybody learn something? Yes. I think what I learned is that I'm going to start smoking and, and washing my chickens in the toilet. And so, to practice conventional medicine these days is kind of productive. To practice deceptive medicine, right? You kind of, kind of, you know, cheerlead these interventions that really don't. Congestive heart failure, and was basically he's a retired firefighter. Revolutionary in terms of wellness, and so um, uh, hopefully there will come a time where we don't have to hide our. Our, our, our drug compliance issues from our physicians because they'll be on board, they'll want to wean you off of these drugs because you're doing so much better by treating the cause of your disease. I'm so excited to hear that. Um, and so, I mean, the biggest problem. Well, the problem is, okay.